This is Twit. Our audience actually loves hearing about people's kind of journeys through the professional world. Can you kind of give us a quick trip through down memory lane and your journey through tech? Yeah, uh, I was lucky enough to kind of get into my journey early. Uh, Co-founded my first startup at 19, and it was a big beanbag chair company called Lovesack. And uh, I got into the product development kind of role really quickly and even before college, and it did really well. Uh, It actually, they IPO'd about a month ago. And uh, my entire journey from there rolled into getting an MBA in entrepreneurship and global branding. And then I went and worked for ConAgra in their launch space. Uh, and basically have been building and launching products in one way, shape, or form ever since, right? When I left ConAgra, I went and uh, worked in the crowdfunding space and co-launched about 60 platforms um, wow. in various countries that were all doing different fundraising methods. So equity fundraising, Kickstarter-style stuff, um, charitable fundraising. And, and I found it really married up with that kind of product launch background really well. Uh, we started to kind of develop programmatic launch pads that we started using for our clients in their launch process. And Wrench AI is basically the culmination of un- unifying kind of that that bootstrap mentality that we had at 19 with kind of a lot of the strategy and the stuff that you see in really large enterprises uh, and applying artificial intelligence to product launch and better understanding your user population. So that's kind of the, the how I got here. Um, long stumbling, uh, and, uh, having a lot of fun with a lot of people that were all kind of trying to put their own dent in the universe. I found, uh, in that space, it's very easy to stay motivated to want to keep doing it even when it's a tough day at work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So obviously a lot of organizations have a ton of data out there, whether it's structured or unstructured data, um, whether it's sales data or whatever. I, I even know, uh, a bunch of organizations that don't, don't even have, don't even use digital technology, to, to track their sales and so on. So they're, yeah. they're still using carbon paper type sales. Now, is, is it time for organizations to kind of look to digital transformation uh, to better their business here? You really have to. Um, we're getting into a space and we're getting into kind of a day and age where the real battle is essentially won by who has the strongest relationship with their population. And that means that means relevant content. I mean, it's really kind of fun, quite frankly, for me to kind of see how the ad click side of marketing space has evolved. And essentially you're beginning to see user populations like new millennials that literally don't even see ads. They, they, you ask them, Hey, you know, did you notice, what did you think of that ad? They go, what ad? They did, they have a filter, um, that, you know, they're so bombarded by different kind of pop-up style advertising that it just doesn't even feasibly work anymore. And uh, we've gotten past the States where a lot of people were basically saying, Hey, content, 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 and just flood the web. Uh, we're now into a space of relevance and it's understanding kind of who you're talking to and kind of how to approach them in a meaningful way. And quite frankly, if technology does its job properly, it gets out of the way and it allows those two people to kind of connect. You know, if you look at artificial intelligence, it's really a process automation tool fundamentally. And uh, when implemented properly, it allows you to automate the research and automate a lot of the busy work that allows you to have that kind of meaningful conversation with an individual. And in our business and with a lot of the work that we're doing, uh, a lot of the changes that we're seeing to kind of the finance space and a lot of the spaces that you know didn't necessarily think that they would be hit by AI. So uh, example, like financial advisors, uh, you see stuff like Wealthfront and like these ETF electronic funds trading uh, bots that can essentially beat anybody that picks and chooses stocks. So their job is becoming a relationship management kind of their 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 job is to know their client, understand the risk tolerances and the life stages and what type of types of funds they want to be into. Uh, and that's how their job's evolving. They're not picking stocks anymore. Their their job is to know people and to have a very good relationship with them. I think that's a really kind of positive uh, direction for it to go. And obviously like any technology, it can be misused, but, um, I'd kind of like to, to see that relevance is really kind of the king of what matters now. Right. Well, wall street look out, I think at this point, but I think another thing that you kind of pointed out a little bit is the fact that, uh, you know, with AI, it actually can create a much more competitive market. Are you seeing that kind of trend where if you in- introduce AI into a business and actually some data analytics, it increases the competitive market for them? 
Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, there's research from Gartner that essentially, I think it's $2.1 trillion of business will be captured by those that adopt AI technology and sales and marketing processes. I mean, it essentially, depending on who you talk to, essentially those that implement AI when they're doing kind of uh, this type of kind of customer relationship management work are talking about minimum of two, but on average, kind of a 5x improvement in efficiency. Um, it means that you're doing much more of the actual on the phone contact and the meaningful work and much, much less of just, again, the busy work that just happens between kind of life, quite frankly. Uh, those that adopt that type of a strategy are the ones that own tomorrow. And even a lot of companies right now, quite frankly, they're adopting this type of tech and tool, not quite frankly, even really understanding how they're going to use it, right? There's the, the buzzwords and the, the big data and <laughs> synergy and whatever else where a lot right. of people go, I, I don't quite understand what I'm buying. And quite frankly, there's actually a lot of skepticism on the businesses and the enterprises behalf as well. Well, they'll say, you know, uh, I'll adopt it, but I don't trust it. Definitely not yet. And there's almost always a cultural adoption of we need to not just implement the technology, but we need to prove it works. And we need to give them some understanding of how it made some decision before they'll actually rely on. It. So, yeah, there's there's a lot there.